<laughs> v squared minus 4km less than zero, which one is that? Under, Under damped. damped. Equals zero, <laughs> vertically damped, and greater than zero, over, over damped. Woo. So there's absolutely nothing brand new in today's lecture. We're sort of pulling a bunch of stuff together that we have learned um, already um, about the harmonic oscillator. So we've talked about it sort of not in a lesson all by itself. It's been embedded in several places. Um, so the harmonic oscillator is the mass on a spring. Yes. Oh, thank you. I thought so, but I was, I was like, well, maybe she got a new one that only goes in her ear. Okay, got it. Okay. okay, so the harmonic oscillator, remember, is a mass on a spring um, that oscillates back and forth. So it's um, modeled by m y double prime plus b y prime plus k y equals zero. m is the mass of the on the end of the spring. k is the spring constant, so it's uh, a measure of how sort of hard it is to move that, compress the spring. And b is the damping coefficient. Okay, so we've talked about this before. This equation is second order because there's a second derivative in it. It's linear because there are no like y squareds in there or anything. Um, and it's homogeneous because there are no t's on the other, there's no term on the other side of t's in it. So we have two methods that we could use to solve this. We learned um, a lucky guess method in chapter two. And then we also learned how to solve linear systems in chapter three. So we're gonna do it both ways. We'll review both things um, to refresh your memory. All right, so let's look at lucky guess first. All right, that's the older one. So that is the one where we said, okay, so I'm looking for a function y. If I'm trying to solve this differential equation, the solution is a function y of t, so that when I add its second derivative plus 7 times its first derivative plus 10 times itself, I get 0. All right, so that means that those three terms on the left would have to be like terms to be able to add them together and get 0. So what kind of function has... At itself, its derivative and its second derivative are all like terms. Yeah. E to the something, yeah. So my lucky guess is that y is some some kind of e to the s t, right? We don't know what s is, but we'll call it e to the s t. All right. So that means um, it's just a random letter. We could use lambda. But we could use lambda, and in fact, it turned out to be lambda. We just, um, when we solve it the other way, you'll see that the s and the lambda are the same. Whoa. Yeah, right. Reading <laughs> alert. All right, so if y is e to the st, that means that y prime is s e to the st, and y double prime would be s squared e to the st. And then we plug in the y, the y prime, and the y double prime into the differential equation and figure out what s has to be. So y double prime, that's s squared e to the st, plus 7 times y prime, so that's 7s e to the st, plus 10 times plain old y e to the st, that needs to equal 0. So every term in this equation I just wrote has an e to the st in it. Factor it out. And you're left with just a quadratic s squared plus 7s plus 10 equals 0. Five and two, yeah. Notice how this quadratic corresponds to the original differential equation. The double prime, the 7 prime, and the 10 just the regular, so it matches up really nicely. So once you once you see that pattern, you don't have to write this all out every time when you're doing lucky guess. So this factors to e to the st, s plus five, s plus two. So I get s is negative five and negative two. 
So I have two s values that makes this true. So that means I have two solutions, right? Y equals e to the negative 5t and y equals e to the negative 2t. And when you have two particular solutions, what can you do to get the general solution? Uh, yeah. K1, K2 yeah. business. Yeah, K1, K2 business, you take a linear combination of your two particular solutions. So my general solution general solution is a linear combination of those two particular solutions, y of t is going to be k1 e to the negative 5t plus k2 e to the negative 2t. Okay. Not to get off topic, but this is like on the test when we had our initial condition, this is what we're learning. Yes, exactly. I gave the question on your test was basically exactly like this that you weren't able to do yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, quick question. Yeah. So th this we could create a, a vector you know, that is isomorphic to this system of equations, right? Okay. Or is that something to do? Vector. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, a linear system that's that's yeah. equivalent to this second order system. That's what we're about to do. Yes. Okay, so that was method one, was was using lucky guess to solve the second order equation. All right, let's use um, method two here. So I'm solving the exact same problem again. So I'm just going to rewrite it. Y double prime plus seven Y prime plus 10y equals 0. All right, so this time I'm going to convert this to a system, a linear system, and then I'm going to solve it using the tools we developed in Chapter 3, which means eigenvalues, eigenvectors, all that. All right, so if I convert this to a system, I could say y prime is v, right? Because y is position of the mass on the spring, so y prime is velocity. And then v prime would be equivalent to y double prime, right? The derivative of velocity is actually a second derivative of position. So if I solve this guy for y double prime, I would get negative 7y prime, which is actually v minus 10y. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Well, actually, how did you get the negative? I was solving for y double prime, so I subtracted oh. from both sides. Okay. All right, so I could write this um, in vector notation. This is equivalent to saying y prime v prime equals some matrix times y v. So what is my matrix? Zero. Yes. Yes. Zero, one, Zero, one. Negative, 10, negative, 10. negative 10, negative 7. Because the negative 10 goes with the y. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I have my system written in matrix notation. The way I start solving this thing is I look at the eigenvalues of the matrix, right? Okay, so. Start by finding eigenvalues. So I take the determinant of a minus lambda i. So this is going to be um, negative lambda 1, negative 10, negative 7 minus lambda. Set that determinant equal to 0. Shouldn't you just have bars? I'm sorry, I know it's pedantic or petty, but shouldn't you just have straight bars rather than the enclosed matrices? Um, if I didn't write the word determinant, yes, right, because the straight bars mean determinant, but I wrote determinant, so I <laughs> um, Okay, so to find a determinant of a matrix, you do a times d minus b times c. So I've got negative lambda 
times negative 7 minus lambda minus negative 10. Okay, so we multiply this out and combine like terms, and I get lambda squared plus 7 lambda plus 10 equals 0. That's the same quadratic equation we just solved earlier, but it had s's in it before. So we get the same thing. We get lambda is negative 5 and negative 2. Wow. <laughs> yeah, worlds collide. Good. Okay, so. <laughs> um, the difference when solving a system versus solving a second order equation is that a system has two pieces to its solution, right? Because a system has a y prime and a v prime, so when you're solving it, you're looking for a y and a v. Right? Whereas when we solved the other way, I was just looking for a y that made that single equation true. All right, so I could get my y right now. I could do e to the negative 5t, e to the negative 2t, take a linear combination, and I'd have y. But if I want v also, um, we need the eigenvectors, right? the eigenvectors associated with those eigenvalues. That's where you do A times lambda equals lambda. A, B equals lambda, B. Yeah. yeah. Eigenvector. All right, so we solve. We'll start with lambda equals negative 5. And we want to solve A, V equals lambda, V. So my A matrix was. 0, 1, negative 10, negative 7. Zero, 1, and negative 7, thank you. My eigenvector is what I don't know. It's not an xy. What are my variables this time? Y, y v equals lambda negative 5 times y v. <coughs> okay, so I get 0 y plus v equals negative 5 v. So v equals negative Five V. Uh, y. Y. Negative five. Yes, you're right. Yep. V equals okay. negative five Y. Good. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other one is going to be equivalent. So give me a vector Y V that satisfies this. Negative equation. five one or one negative five. One negative five. Great. Right. All right. So there's one of them. All right, then we'll do for lambda equals negative 2. A V equals lambda V. Y V equals negative 2 times Y V. How much more events can be 1, negative 2? Yeah. <laughs> so this ends up being um, V equals negative 2 Y is the first equation. That gives me enough information to write an eigenvector. 1, negative 2. Good. So now I can write my general solution, right? Because I, I know how to build a solution if I have eigenvalues and eigenvectors associated. So in general, The general solution looks like uh, it's going to be y v. Oops, right for the first time. Y v is k one e to the lambda one t v one plus k2 e to the lambda 2 t v2, right? So lambda 1 and lambda 2 are your two eigenvalues. v1 and v2 are your associated eigenvectors. So in this case, we have k1 e to the negative 5 t times my first eigenvector, which was 1, negative 5, plus k2 
e to the negative 2t times the next eigenvector, which is 1 negative 2. So this is my y. So we have our particular solution. That's right. The, the initial conditions, we need simply plug the minus the prime and then we y prime, right? Yes. But y prime is equal to b, so therefore we. So, uh, is, the, is what I just wrote down here equivalent to what I found using method one? Yes. Yes, because you just look at the top part, right? The y part is what we found in part one. So k1 e to the negative 5t plus k2 e to the negative 2t. Completely equivalent. The second component is just the v of t, v of t which is actually just the derivative of y, right? So we, so we could have found v, we could have found v in the original. <laughs> so if I had, I could have easily down here said v of t would be negative 5 k1 e to the negative 5 t minus 2 k2 e to the negative 2 t. Right, just take the derivative and you've got y prime equals v. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This is fun. This is fun. Okay, good. All right, so what's the last thing we can do? Solve, solve for um, a particular solution. Um, yeah, there's one more piece here. Oh, no, four. Four. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Find the particular solution that satisfies some initial conditions. Right? So y of 0 is 2 and y prime of 0 is negative 13. I'm going to do it on a, on a big... No x. I guess there's a good question like this on the test. You're right. We already did a lot first. I know. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. right. So... We were already tested on that. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it in mind. <laughs> Don't worry, if Bob's the one who tests the test, we're all going to get 90s in. I already wrote all the tests. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so my initial conditions here are that y of 0 is 2, and y prime of 0 is negative 13. Yeah, so what, y prime of 0 is actually the same thing as saying v of 0, right? So I now know that y of 0 and v of 0 equals, I'm going to have k1 e to the negative 5 times 0 is just a 1, right? So that's going to be k1 times 1 negative 5 plus k2. e to the 0 is a 1. So this is going to be 1 negative 2. Right? I'm just plugging in zeros for the t's. And that is supposed to give me now 2 negative 13. That's my y of 0 and my v of 0. All right, so now I can write two equations. This says k1 plus k2 equals 2. And I have negative 5 k1 minus 2 k2 is negative 13. And then you can use your favorite method to solve a system of equations. You could write a matrix. You could yeah, R -R -E -F it. R -R -E -F it. I love it. That's why we circleize it. You could just do a simple um, substitution or elimination. No. So I'm going to say k1 is 2 minus k2. Oh, that's going to get it. Oh, that's going to get it. It's not worth it. I just said <laughs> hey, you didn't either. I walked out. I walked out of the winner. I only moved past the winner. That actually makes sense. Do we get a K2 with negative 1? Whoa, spoiler! K2 is negative 1, and then K1 
ends up being 2 minus negative 1, so yeah, k1 is 3. This is 3 and negative 1. 3 and negative 1, yes. So my, my solution that I was looking for is going to be y of t, b of t, equals... Uh, K1, which is 3. 3 e to the negative 5t. One negative 5? Yeah. And then you just put in your k values. Yep. This is this is the particular solution for those initial conditions. Yeah. I don't remember that. before break. Minus eight and I remember the specifics of that quiz. Wait, one question. Right? Do you have three digits? One four. Three and negative one. Yep. Yep, and then you just then you just throw your those in it's the general solution, replace your K1 and your K2 with a three and a negative one, and you've got your particular solution. Oh yeah, you weren't here, so you don't know what you're gonna do I got the identity that you can actually do that's like you know what I'm doing. Yeah, that's what you're that's also yeah. 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 All right, so that is it for the demo portion of class. Nice thorough review of some chapter two and chapter three stuff. And now you can work on your activities. Oh, boy.